Another day before me What will I behold If I'm sad or angry I know I'm not alone When I think I won't make it I remember your word And know I am protected And lose all my concern Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New Hope in the Lord. Uh, I'm Reverend Joseph, your host, and I thank you for joining our broadcast today. If you're new to uh, our broadcast, just want to let you know that um, this is a ministry that has one purpose, uh, to bring you hope uh, in a hopeless world. And there's only one way to have this hope and to have an inner peace and true joy and a true love in your heart, and that's through entering into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the answer the world needs. The answer doesn't need religion. We have so many religions, it's unbelievable, and especially in Christendom. It's not about religion, it's not about denomination. It's about having a personal relationship with the God that created you. And once you enter into that relationship, because the Lord's always looking to draw everybody to him. For the Bible says that there's two uh, roads. One is wide and destructive, and many are on that. And that's a, a destructive road of self. And the other one is straight and narrow, and that's Jesus Christ. But he'll keep plucking at your heart, plucking at your heart. And if you reject him, there's going to be a time where that's it. He's not going to come after you no more. But when he comes after you, no one can come to the Father except the Spirit draws him. So my guest is Jerry DeFlorio, and uh, Jerry has had an encounter with the living God, and it's changed his life. So we're thankful, Jerry, for you to be able to come on the broadcast today and share about how it was before Christ came into your life and how it is now. Be more than happy to, and I would, I would do this to glorify the Lord. So why don't you go, Jerry, and start to speak about your upbringing. Were you religious? Did you uh, go to church? Uh, did you hear about Jesus? Uh, why don't you just go on and start to share? All right, well, you know, I was born at a very early age. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, yeah, at a, as a young boy, a, I was uh, <clears throat> brought up in a family of 11 and in a three room, uh, not bedroom, but three room uh, apartment. And um, with 11, part of me, 11, 11, 11 people in three rooms. Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, we, we were very poor. And my, I remember my mother uh, telling me when I was a young boy, I never left me about about it that. We've been, we were on welfare for 15 years. My father was an alcoholic mm. and had a lot of children, but wasn't very responsible. He loved good times going out in the midst of it all. So there was a lot of, um, in that environment at that time, there was a, a lot of fear, insecurity, and alcohol, alcoholism abuse. And, uh, as I was growing up, I, I didn't understand. I wasn't guided by my father. Not that, I'm, not that I'm putting all the blame on him, but I wasn't guided by my father to understand uh, right and wrong values, uh, it, the importance of education or anything. I just was simply growing up, just trying to uh, belong or acknowledged or loved or liked. And uh, that was my... Uh, bringing up. And, uh, of course, you know, my father says to me, um, you got to quit school, help support the family while he was out having a good time. So I quit school at 16. And, uh, I remember a lot of, a lot of things that went on when I was a young boy, like my father would lock my brother up in a closet when he was a bad boy, stupid. And the drinking that he did, he abused my mother in many ways, hating her or speaking up to her and what a, what a, what a, what a, with terrible words. So when I quit school, I didn't care. I didn't like myself that much, and I didn't think I would ever measure up to anyone. 
I quit school actually uh, around um, when I was 16 in 1959. But I started to re recognize myself as um, not measuring up to a lot of the kids that had fathers that took them there. And took, I think I had a little self-pity party because uh, the things they told me, uh, it really uh, irked me about where I was coming from and what I had. So, and I think that was around the fifth grade I started recognizing that. So, um, as far as uh, myself uh, with with uh, God, at a young as a young boy, I didn't know too much uh, about Him, but I didn't like when people talked and talked about using God's name in vain, and I didn't know why I didn't like it. I mean, what do I care? What do I care about anything? But when people started saying the words of using God's name in vain, it really irked me. And uh, I would tell some people that. You know, Jerry, the, the thing is, is that God had put that in your heart from, from, from a little boy because uh, you, you had to grow up with pent up anger within you. I mean, here you are, you have other children that have daddies that are going to take them to a ball game, their daddies that are playing with them. And, and here you are that have, uh, your father's a drunk, he's abusive to your mother and so forth and, and your other siblings. And so you must have had this pent up anger in there. But in the midst of that, there was a tenderness uh, towards God. And, and, and so that was where God was just revealing himself to you that, that, that he's there for you, even though you didn't really understand it, I guess, at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, as um, as as we were growing up, um, we had suicides in the family. Mm. We had uh, everybody quit school. There was there was no one that that uh, went follow all the way through school. We had a lot of fear, a lot of fear, a lot of hurt, a lot of uncertainty going on, and we and we didn't we didn't know what values were. We didn't know what was uh, right, what was wrong. So, you know, I went on to, uh, took on a few jobs. As, as I turned 16, I went on to taking a few jobs on. Nothing important, nothing that added, added up to anything. And then all of a sudden I got myself involved in a auto body shop. I started to work for uh, an auto body uh, place. And um, as that happened, uh, there was this um, this young girl that was uh, above uh, an apartment house that was, I could see out the back window from the body shop who was staring down at me. <laughs> and uh, she, she was a beautiful girl. And uh, finally, I got to, over, over a period of short time, I, I got to meet her and talk to her. Well, she became my wife. And um, we've been now married uh, for 54 years. I know I'm an older person, and I've gone through a lot of things in my life. But I want to tell you something. You're never too old to serve the Lord. Because if you have a calling on your life or you, you sense that, you, that, you, that, that uh, you're pulled in a direction to serve him, follow it through. Follow through and keep praying to God and say, God, what do you want me to do? Because here I am, 78 now. This month, I'll be 78. And I'm still serving the Lord, and I love to, to get out there to, to do whatever God wants me to do. And I've probably through my lifetime, I've um, from the time I had a calling on my life, I know I'm a little ahead of myself, but we'll get back. I think there was thousands of people that had come to the Lord to, to God calling me out to, to, uh, to ministry. And, and Jerry, when, you, when you're going in, in a body shop, and uh, I mean, God's not on your mind. That beautiful woman upstairs on your mind. I didn't and, know the Lord yet. <laughs> did did, um, did, did, did uh, your body shop that you were working in part-time, did that lead to you uh, doing uh, cars and liking them and maybe having your own job there, working by, you know, having your own business? Yes, it did, Joe. Uh, uh, 
Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I liked the body work so much. And my brother was an auto body man, and he had um, he was running an auto body shop in a dealership. So over a period of a, a few years, while I was working and learning, uh, we decided uh, to open up a, a body shop. So back then, in the 70s, beginning of the 70s, it was very easy. It was easy to get it to go into business compared to today. So uh, we got a place. We we started out, and uh, it was very very good, very successful for for a short period of time, and. Uh, from that point, we wanted, we rented a body shop, we rented it in a place, and then a few, just a couple of years later, we, we uh, opened up our own body shop, had it built. Wow. Uh, it was, uh, you know, eight bays. And uh, look, look, I'll tell you, from somebody come from poverty, quit school and everything, can God, can God do the impossible? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He does the impossible. If he could take a guy like me, with no direction, no understanding, uh, I was worldly. I was just trying to belong. And then he would pick me out, bless me, bless my brother. And we had a nice business going. And then my brother, who had five children, he was running the, uh, the uh, office with the estimates and everything. And I was working out there with, 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 uh, doing the body work. Well, not to you know, belabor that, I just want to say that uh, there was a period of time that was devastating to me, is that his, him, and, him and his wife got a divorce over five children during the time we were running the business. And uh, he started losing track of, of uh, showing up. He was very hurt. And... Uh, when he was there, he was mine was somewhere else, and we started losing business. We were almost losing the shop that we just got, worked it through the bank and everything. We just got it, so uh, it it was just a really upside down thing with with me and my life. And I did the only thing I knew best to do. I didn't know how to know God except through re repetitious prayer, which wasn't very often. I got on my knees in the office in when it, when. Uh, one of the two employees left. And I cried out to God for the first time I talked to God. I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. And I didn't even know what compelled me to do it, but I did it. So I asked God, I said, God, I said, well, you don't want to lose this place. I like, I'd love to have it. Uh, I'd love to keep it and uh, keep going and, um, you know, make something of myself. So people would see that we, we, this family that uh, we're brought up in, was, wasn't a failure in everything. So what had happened when I, when I did that, my accountant, who was a CPA certified, uh, I had to go over to pay my quarterly tax. I, after I said the prayer to the Lord, I was actually weeping because I didn't know what to do. We were really losing the business. And to pay the bills, because we were so down in finances and, and uh, work and, and doing work, uh, I would, I would, I would take what what was uh, necessary to pay off bills, and the ones that didn't weren't that necessary or that important, I would keep last. So it was really upside down for me. And um, from from that point um, in my life, I I didn't know which way to turn. So, but after that prayer, I think I reached God's heart. I believe it because the, the, the accountant said, you have to pay your tax. He called me and says, you got to come over. We got to do the quarterly tax. So I went over to see him and uh, he checked out the, the paperwork and everything. And he says, you know something? He says, you're going through a lot, aren't you? I says, yeah. He says, uh, do you know Jesus? I says, um, I know that he died in a cross. That's all I know. I don't know much more. He says, did you ever have a relationship with him? I said, what is, what is that? What do you mean? I didn't know that. Like when I got on my knees and asked God for help for the business, I didn't know that you could talk to God and 
and you could talk to him all the time, and he, and he answers prayer. So the accountant says to me, you need to be born again. I says, I says, but I go to church every once in a while. Isn't that all right? He says, this is different. He says, you need to have a relationship with Jesus so that when you pray, your prayers are much more powerful. And, and the things that uh, God sees your, with your heart, he works with you. He helps you. And he loves you. Boy, when he said that, he loved me. It really, really got to me. Because I never heard that kind of talk before. And uh, so I became born again. But it didn't, no bells and whistles went off. And then he invited me to a full gospel businessmen's uh, chapter meeting in Norwalk, Connecticut. And I went with my wife, but I wasn't sure what I, if, I, if, if it was the right thing or what, what am I doing with all this? Because, you know, be, being a, a Catholic, I, I thought that that's where I, where I belong and I shouldn't go outside that, being a Catholic, outside that church. It was, there was nothing else that was important to me except being a Catholic. And, so, you know, uh, Jerry, um, be, being a Catholic um, doesn't save you. Uh, being a Protestant doesn't save you. Uh, it's a form of religion, and, and, and Satan uses that to keep people uh, into their religion. I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. I was born yeah. a Methodist, I'll die a Methodist. And, and without having that relationship with Jesus, not that, and I'm not saying that there aren't Catholics that have Jesus in their heart. What I'm saying is, is that there are many of them. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, the only way to get to heaven is by having Christ in your heart, you know. So for time's sake, Jerry, um, why don't you just kind of um, go and, and uh, just uh, full gospel businessmen, did you get involved with them and so forth like that? Yeah. So when I went to the first meeting that uh, my accountant invited me to was a full gospel meeting, I knew nothing of what was going on except that there's people in there who were starting to speak this tongue language, and I didn't know what the heck that was. I'm going, what, what, what am I getting myself into? But yet I had a heaviness on me knowing that the shop was, was going down, and I, did, I did, just didn't know how to, how to deal with it. But I went in there uh, to the meeting with my accountant, and this, the speakers that they had that night, which this is all new to me, was, was talking about if you were to die tonight, do you know if you would go to heaven or not? And I started thinking about that. I don't know where I'm going. Even though I became born again, I didn't, I, you know, I was just a baby, just the beginning to, to, to know the Lord. So, so what happened is that I, I went up forward to reassure myself that uh, I, I'm right with God. And they prayed over me and I told them about my business, how it was going down. Well, just to kind of shorten up the story, Joe, that I, that I know for time's sake, I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, I went to some Bible study uh, uh, with my accountant. He started really ministering to me, mentoring me. And uh, from that point, he invited me to go to a full gospel businessman's uh, 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 convention in Anaheim, California. Now, I've never been even out of Norwalk, let alone go, go anywhere else. So I went to this, this um uh, uh, California, I went with him, and um, it's the funniest thing, Joe, is that uh, being, I, you know, I was a strong Catholic, even though I didn't go to church, I defended it. And I go into this, this first meeting that, and we sat together at this table, and I was sitting right next to a Catholic nun who was born again. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So she started telling me about born again. She started telling me about the, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't understand all that. I wasn't too, too new in it. So I went up to uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard these testimonies of people, how God touched their lives, touched their businesses. And that's what I, I needed. I needed God to touch my business. Well, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I didn't need an airplane to go back. I was flying high. I was flying, so, so just flying high, just like I could go back like airbound on my own. <laughs> Funny. So something started happening to me 
were, were I was picking up on the business and I started learning the office and estimates supernaturally. I, I can't even explain it. But I, the business. So, so Jerry, here you're, t you're talking about how God intervened, filled you with the spirit, and now you have a new mindset and a new heart. And now God is helping you to learn the office business. And with that, you're, you're able to have the business, which is a miracle. And, 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 and that, that's the great thing about God. You, you, you depend upon him, not upon yourself, and, and God will work that out. And that's a beautiful story. So, uh, Jerry, with uh, uh, your ministry, um, I, 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 I was told that you have a ministry to young people, and probably it was because of your situation with your father that you didn't want to see um, young people uh, get the way that you were and, and to get that uh, in that situation. So uh, we only have just about five minutes left, Jerry. So uh, we want to just share a, a little bit about the ministry and what's it called and, and how you started it. Okay. All right. Uh, I was uh, feeling real strong about um, the young people in that they're, that we're losing a generation of young people. We're just losing them. And I, and I've, I, I sensed it, I felt it, I heard, heard things that they were so bad that with families today. Uh, so, so, what, so what I did was I went before the Lord and gathered four or five people together. When we started praying once a week, every week, faithfully for 10 and a half to 11 months. That's asking, dedication. Ask, ask, yeah, asking God to open up a door to minister to young people. Well, I had the experience as a full gospel businessman running chapter meetings where people would share their testimonies and they had a Christian band and we were bringing a lot of people to the Lord that way. But, but that background and, and uh, experience that I had, uh, God knew that. So when we were, I was praying, finally I did, I, I, I come to a point where I didn't want to pray anymore. I felt that it, we didn't have to the five of us. So I went, was invited to this in-house meeting in Stanford, Connecticut, where, where, there's, where they were having a, you know, gathering together and fellowship and stuff. And they had a speaker. So I, I went to this meeting. Believe me, I, I, it's something I would never generally do because uh, I just don't, you know, I haven't gotten involved in much of that, going to people's houses and so forth, except if I pray for somebody. So I'm there, and I'm looking at the, the speaker when he got up, and he started sharing a few things. And then uh, I said, well, you know, it's getting late. I'm going to start to leave. So I go to leave, and he says, wait a minute. He says, uh, you there. He says, before you go out, uh, God is telling me that you're going to start a youth outreach. He knew nothing about it. So I got involved in this. Uh, from what he said, I, I started to uh, go, go to the uh, South Senate Temple's prayer group, which he has for the last 40 years. I, I dropped into his meeting, and all of a sudden, a lady hands me a check for $1,000, and we started the ministry. And Jerry, what's the, what's the name of the ministry? And I know with the virus, ministries aren't meeting now, but the name of the ministry and uh, how, how it grew, if you had grew in chapters that you have different places? Yeah, uh, uh, I was trying to think of a name for for this thing and and got it got it on its feet. Feet. The Lord directed everything with me. I I just knew that, and um, I I got the name called the Holy Smoke Hangout, which uh, it's it's for the young people to come and have a place to go, and also to share their their gifts and talents. And the thing became so successful. The first meeting was like 20, 25 kids. The second, third meeting going on went up to 100, 125 kids. And a lot of them were different kids every month. And people were, kids were getting saved left and right and getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And they would share testimonies. And they would do rap music that were Christian uh, oriented. Jerry, how many um, how many holy holy smoke uh, are there now? I know that because of the virus, they're not operating. But how many of them are there now? Well, we got uh, at least um, at least five or six right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Evansville, Indiana, Dallas, Texas, New York, Connecticut, and uh, 
of Pennsylvania. So, so, so they've grown. And now I'm going to start one here in Naples, Florida. And, and the great thing is, Jerry, is that it, with God, he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak to def confound the strong. And here you were, Jerry, like a, like a, a foolish man looking to other people, you know, your whole family with quitting school and, and so forth like that. And, and here it is, God raises you up, you know, to, yeah. to be an anointed man of God without an education, don't need it. The only thing you need to be is available with God for available and, and reliable. And, and that's, that's what you have done. And with full gospel businessmen, you were a great, soldier there and now with these young people and you know the bottom line is is that he's still using you jerry yes and i want to be used i i keep praying for that and that's what other people should be doing if they're if they feel themselves not not doing anything or feel like um, they're not being used by god well come before the lord and he'll guide you i know it'll work does it work for me and i just want to say one thing quick uh, in the full gospel businessman's fellowship here i was a poor young kid, didn't have any direction. I'm here living in, in this small city called Norwalk, Connecticut. And, and being involved with the Full Gospel Businessmen, I became a, an international director, now vice president of the, of the fellowship. And also, uh, I have visited many countries, bringing my testimony Right. And bringing a lot of people saved. So, so they, God took a little guy like me, a nobody, and made me, made me feel complete. And I've been so thankful to the Lord for that. When you say complete, Jerry, you're not looking like before. When, when you were with that body shop, you probably made a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Yes, I did. And, and, and um, then, but you didn't have, you didn't have that happiness except for Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money, uh, but with Jesus in your life, you know that you take the money and give it out to help people, to go out and spread the gospel out, correct? A lot of, a lot of it, Joe. I mean, I didn't care because I was a real, not was, I am a strong giver because of what I didn't have and what I saw what people go through, I decided to help. I help people with mortgages. I help people with uh, different kinds of needs, uh, Different things, Joe. It's just that uh, uh, I had my, the compassion of my heart was for re reaching out to people like that. And the bottom line was is that when, when you st uh, started to re rebuke people for using the Lord's name in vain, uh, what happened was is that the presence of God was so strong there, you know. With your life. Jerry, thank you so much from uh, Naples, Florida. I'm a little jealous uh, that it's a <laughs> rainy muggy day today and you got the air the fan on and two fans on but god bless you and thank you so much for coming on the program today all right Joe. thank you very much for having me and may god bless you okay. and bless thank the you, people sir. who are listening thank you ladies and gentlemen we, we just we give god praise for what he's doing in people's lives he's changing them and he's making them after his image and they have a peace a joy a love in the midst of a pandemic it's insane. The natural man can't have that. Only the Spirit of God could do it when you receive Christ in your life. Come to Jesus. Your sins will be forgiven. Uh, Christ will wipe them all out. When you die, you won't have to be eternally judged and damned, but you'll be eternally with the Lord. Thank you for watching our bro broadcast today. Tune again next week. Same station, same time. To the inside, the outside, to the inside. I know, Lord, you know the depth of me from the outside to the inside.